Welcome. In this module, we're going to talk about security engineering and what it is all about. So security engineering is the third layer of the security transformation model that we have talked about in this course. And it consists of more in-depth and slightly more complicated security activities, which take a little bit more time and a little bit more effort. And I'd also like to mention that in security engineering, we're going to look later, a little bit later in this course, we're going to take a look at the framework developed by CIS, Center for Internet Security, which is called the Top 20 Critical Controls. And this is an excellent framework of 20 controls, which looks at the security activities in an aggregate manner. So there are two, actually two ways to look at the security controls. One is security hardening, which is layer one of the security transformation model, which looks at or applies security controls in an independent manner on a particular IT asset, for example, on a Windows Server 2012 R2 machine or an instance. Now, in CIS top 20 critical controls, the assets are taken as an aggregate or together, and there's lots of controls which have to be applied together. So uh, many times the security engineering is related to security architecture. Here is another look at the security transformation model, the four layer security transformation model, which we've talked about in this course, security hardening layer one, vulnerability management or vulnerability scanning in layer two. And now we're talking about security engineering. So we're going to take a look at the IT environment and the IT administrators and IT users in an aggregate manner collectively and we're going to look at what controls we can apply across all the IT assets in the form of the CIS critical controls or the top 20 critical controls. Now, the types of activities which are usually performed in security engineering are, let's take some examples. Firewall, granular access lists. So the firewall um, is placed either at the perimeter of the network or it is placed at the mouth of the data center to control and filter the traffic. So we're going to talk about granular access lists. Then we're going to talk about building an effective DMZ architecture, segregating the network with VLANs uh, in, order to, in order to segregate the broadcast domains. Um, adding a security tool such as CM, a firewall, data loss prevention, network, admi network admission control, etc., Or applying encryption between the application and the database. So these are more complicated activities which take more time, which take more planning, and sometimes may have some cost associated with them as well. So let's talk about a little bit more detail about the DMZ architecture case study. Now the DMZ or the demilitarized zone um, is, it lies, and we'll take a look at the diagram in just a moment. It lies near the perimeter and before the internal network. And here, the web server or the email server, those machines or those services which have, which have to communicate with the outside world, but which are also used by the internal network, are placed in the demilitarized zone or the DMZ. So the DMZ is an important zone in the overall security architecture. It requires specific security planning, design, and implementation. And these devices which need to be placed in the DMZ need to communicate to the outside world are placed in the DMZ, for example, web servers, email gateways, web gateways, and sometimes other devices as well. Now in this diagram, we can look at where the DMZ is placed. So if you look at, you know, if you come in from the ISP, there is a router on the right side of your diagram, there's a next generation firewall, and inside the firewall, there is a zone configured, or it's a one or multiple ports configured on the next generation firewall with some policies and those constitute the DMZ. And here, in this zone, we can place the web security, web gateway, the web server, email anti-spam gateway, and some other servers or devices. So that is the overall placement of the DMZ. Now, the firewall access list is also another important area, along with the DMZ. And uh, it, it, as far as the DMZ is concerned, we will be talking about the placement, the design, the policy, uh, the access lists, in the firewall, for example, and uh, the flow of traffic related to the DMZ. Now, the next one is the access list case study. And let's take, just take briefly talk about this as well. So most of the industry has not unfortunately worked on building granular or detailed 
access lists, be it the firewall um, or a router or even a switch which is placed near the perimeter or, or a firewall placed at the mouth of the data center. Most firewalls have allow all um, you know, rules for traffic and granular access lists need to be built based on servers or traffic flows, specifically allowing types of traffic based on source, destination, and, and, uh, and the port or the type of traffic and disallowing all of the other information. And there needs to be an owner for each entry in the access list. And this is one of the uh, controls suggested by CIS top 20 critical controls from C um, and um, so it's an excellent control that each of the access list entries in a firewall should have a designated owner. So why is the uh, why is security engineering at layer three of the security transformation model? We've already talked about what security engineering is. So uh, the low hanging fruit, which is the security uh, the security hardening and the vulnerability management is considered low hanging fruit. It has to be done first. Uh, teams tend to get bogged down with advanced security tasks which lie in security engineering because they relate to architecture, moving devices around, uh, building detailed firewall access lists. These take time, effort, and often budget approval. And uh, it's always recommended because in security, we've been talking all along that in security, we have to prioritize the more important tasks and the more, more critical tasks or the easier task first in order to build some momentum and get some confidence. So it's recommended to do this, to do security engineering, more complicated tasks, uh, which are, which should be done after the low hanging fruit. And that's why security engineering is placed at layer three of the security transformation model. Thank you. That's all that we have for this module.